chapter 9. First seven verses. Second uh, Samuel chapter nine and the first seven verses. This is how my Bible reads. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house, house of Saul that I may show him kindness? For Jonathan's sake. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. Yes, and when they called him unto David, the king said to him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan, have yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Markir, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Markir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not. I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, yeah. mm. and will restore thee all the land of Saul, yeah. thy father. Yeah. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fade, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Can you repeat these words with me tonight? I, I have a date, have a date with, destiny. with destiny. Amen. That's what I want to preach about tonight. I have a date with destiny. Let us see, man. David was a man of great destiny. But David also was a man of great adversity. Many times the measurement of destiny is seen in how much you've got to go through in order for your destiny to come to pass. David was, of course, a man after God's own heart. He possessed an unusual charisma. He possessed an unusual anointing. He possessed an unusual giftedness. In fact, when King Saul was... Uh, given fits, fits of distemperment, Saul was filled with demons. It was David who would play his harp and would chase the demons away. Yes, sir. While David was there in Saul's house playing music for Saul, Saul's son Jonathan noticed the charisma in which David moved. He, he was in awe. Of David, he was he was captured uh, by by David's movements. Yes. Jonathan, he was so impressed with yes. with with David until he decided to become bosom buddies with him. Yeah. Decided to become brothers with him. Yeah. Decided that they would cut, in fact, a covenant between themselves. Yeah. They took stones and cut themselves yeah. and and they cut the covenant in their flesh and they made a vow with one another that they would be brothers for life. Yeah, yeah. That they would always remember one another. Though Jonathan was impressed with David, Jonathan was in awe of David. Not everybody in Saul's palace liked David that much. Yeah. Uh, because Saul himself 
uh, he looked at David, and the Bible says he eyed David. Yes, he, didn't, he didn't look at David the same way Jonathan looked at David. When, when Saul looked at David, Saul, uh, he, was, he was disgusted with David. Yes. He, didn't, he didn't care for David very much. In fact, uh, he didn't like him so much until he decided one day to take a javelin and hurl it in David's direction. And it's interesting because the only reason why Saul did not like David was because David was anointed and he had great potential. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you many times the uh, reality that you're going to have to face is the fact that you have been anointed by God. And because you are anointed by God, it is going to be the grand mark that's going to distinguish you for attack and for for adversity. Go ahead, Lord. And so the Bible says that Saul takes the javelin and he throws it at David. And he continues to try to kill David and tries to take David out. And Jonathan, he is he is not liking this. He is not he is not impressed with his father's actions against David. He tries to calm his father and for and for about 15 years, Saul continues to try to kill David. What I like about uh, this scenario is, is that Saul is so interested in trying to take David out until he loses focus on what his own assignment on, is. <laughs> because while, while he is busy trying to take David out, the Philistines have now drawn up battle plans and have now began to march against Israel. And when he looks around, he notices that the Philistines are now being plumbed or that Israel is now being plummeted by the Philistines and he takes he and his two sons off to battle to fight against the Philistines but it's too late yeah because the Philistines are now cleaning their clocks and they isolate Israel and they isolate Saul and his sons to the top of Mount Gilboa and there the Bible says uh, 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 Saul is on the top of Mount Gilboa his two sons sons have now been killed in warfare. He stands there and the Bible says he also has been mortally wounded. He is heavily wounded. He looks over at his servant and tells his servant to take his sword and to kill him with his sword. But his servant said, oh no, I'm not going to do that because if I take you out, I'm going to get myself in the trouble. I like that servant's temperament because that servant's temperament says to Saul, Saul, you got yourself into this and Saul, you won't have to get yourself out of this. That's a good word for some child of God in this church right now because you like to try to bail Negroes out who get themselves in the trouble. I made up in my mind, I'm just not going to do it. You took all your money and went down to the casino and gambled all your money away and now you want me to help you pay your life bill? I ain't going to kill you with your own sword. You got yourself into it. Get yourself out of it. You want to cheat on your wife? You want to cheat on your husband? And you want me to call or send a text message to get you out of trouble? Hell no. You got yourself into this. You better get yourself out of it. Preach it. Stay right there, man. Stay right there. Boy, you lay me there. on Mount Gilmore and he decides to do it himself. He takes his own sword and he kills himself. Philistines are now running rapid. They are now victorious because Israel have now been led in a ditch because of Saul's carnal style of leadership. But I gotta tell you that God always got somebody who's gonna do it his way. I believe I'm looking at a generation of people who are tired of carnal religion, tired of doing things the same old way and getting the same old results. Do you not know that if you're going to get some different results, you're going to need somebody who's after God. You see, when history looks back at Saul's leadership, Saul was a man who lusted after positions and power and prestige, but never ever sought the presence of Almighty God. In fact, the entire time that Saul was on the throne, there was no ark behind the veil. They still had church. They still went through the 
ritualistic ceremony of practicing God, but there was no God behind the veil. They came to church, but there was no power and no presence of God. But when David got on the throne, David said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the raw, unadulterated presence of the living God. Yeah. 
anxious and he begins to think about his homeboy, Jonathan. Yeah. In other words, what he does is, is he remember where he came from. Yes, sir. I got, I got. Can I just pause there for a moment and talk to those of you Negroes who have forgot where you came from. From the hood, the ghetto, the slums, and now God has blessed you to live where you want to live, drive what you want to drive, and you got the nerve to pass by people as if you're more than somebody. But can I tell you, you better get off your high horse because your stick sink in the toilet just like my stick sink in the toilet, and none of us are all that anyway. You better remember where you came from. Where he comes from. That was good. Man. He remembered that, that when, he was, when that he was, was just good. a nobody. That he had a brother who stuck it out with him. Yes. When nobody knew his name, yeah. there was a brother who cut a covenant with him. Yeah. You better be very careful how you overlook people who love you when you ain't had nothing. You better be careful about these new friends who show up after you get where you're going. The fact that the matter is they your new friends. They ain't really your new homeboys. They're just some people who like where you are. And whatever you do, children of God, don't overlook your true friends dealing with Negroes that you think are your new friends. He, he looks at the covenant that was cut between him and Jonathan. And he says within himself, I wonder, Kemper, I wonder, is there anybody left from the house of Saul that I may show them the kindness of God for Jonathan's sake? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was during this time that when a new king uh, would come to power, the new king's men would go in and annihilate the old king's men. Anybody who was connected to the former king, the new king's men would go in and assassinate all of those persons so that there would be no challenge to the throne. And so unbeknownst to David, when David became the king, all of David's men went through the cities and began to kill all of those persons who were connected to Saul. And if you read from the second century, Samuel chapter 4, we're introduced to uh, the, the period when the news came out from Jezreel that, that Saul and his sons had been killed. The Bible says that the news came out that he had been killed and his sons had been killed and they picked up a little boy who was about five years old by the name of Mephibosheth and on their way running out of the place, the Bible says they took little Mephibosheth and his midwife on the way out out of there, dropped him, he fell on the ground, and became lame in yeah. both of his feet. Yes, sir. Talk, man. Set it up. David is yeah. asking, is there anybody left? Yeah. And I may show them the kindness of God. He's now talking to one of Saul's former yes, chief of staff yes. by the name of Zeba. He Zeba. says, Zeba, is there anybody left yeah. that I may show them a kindness? He says, there is one. Talk, brother, talk. There is there is one uh -huh. who is left. Yes, sir. His, his, his name is Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. And he's now housed in Lodibar. Lodibar. Yeah. And he's lame like in both his feet. Yeah. Can I just unpack this? Yeah, I'll man. keep it Go on ahead. for minutes and I'm going to my seat. Go ahead. He says there is one who's left. His name is Mephibosheth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's located in Lodibar yeah. and he's laying in both his feet. Help now, yourself, man. First of all, the name Mephibosheth means the forgotten one. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. It is the one that everybody has overlooked. Yes, Mephibosheth is the one that everybody has forgotten about. He so, used to be somebody. He used to be the grandson to the king of Israel. Now his grandfather is dead. His father is dead. Everybody has forgotten about him. Nobody has voted him the most likely to succeed. Nobody has said that he is going to amount to anything. In fact, he's not even an afterthought. He's the thought after the afterthought. But God, can I tell you, it doesn't matter who writes you off. It doesn't matter who forgets about you. Why? Because if God has something for Anything other than that, what God has for you, it is for come on, help me pinch one time. Look at your neighbor, wake him up if you gotta wake him up, and tell him what God has for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he got a bad name. He's got a bad name. But then, y'all, he's 
he's in a bad place. Uh, because because Lodibar uh, is known as the most decrepit of the Samaritan slums. It is located in a place that they call the Howling Wilderness. Uh, 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 Lodibar is a place where people go to forget their past and are to be forgotten. It's where the scums and the bums hang out. It is a place for scoundrels and it's a place uh, uh, where, where fugitives can take refuge or people who want to forget about their past go there to Lodibar. Lodibar is a place for people uh, that nobody else knows what to do with. Lodibar is a place where the grass don't even grow anymore. Lodibar is a place that used to be something, but now it ain't nothing. Lodibar is a place where the birds don't even fly. There is a dark greatness that hovers all over. Like the clouds ain't even the same blue. In There's a greatness. There's a darkness that hovers over Lodibar. That's a good word for somebody in this church right now because you are in Lodibar right now. You are in a place that is dark right now. You can't even understand why the vegetation ain't even growing in your life. You, you used to be somebody. You used to be great. You used to have wonders and dreams and goals and visions but you are in Lodibar but can I tell you it doesn't matter where you are in your life. You still got to And some of y'all 
the presence of King David. David says, Mephibosheth, get up. Because I want to show you kindness. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But he says, I don't want to show you kindness because of who you are. But I want to show you kindness because of who your daddy is. Yeah. Set it up, man. Set it up. Who's at the right church? Yeah. Who knows that the blessings that you enjoy right now ain't because you've been so good. What you enjoy right now ain't because you made the right connections. It ain't because you made the right moves. It ain't because you work for a particular corporation. But the reason why you are blessed right now, it ain't got nothing to do with who you are. It's because of who your daddy is. You don't know who your daddy is. Can I tell you who your daddy is? Well, I don't know who your daddy is. I know who my daddy is. My father is rich. I said my father is rich. My father is rich in houses and land. Rubies and diamonds. Riches untold. His trunk is a fool. He's got riches evermore. My daddy is the ruler of everything.
try to determine where I'm going to be. I may not look like very much right now, but keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Somebody here tonight, people wrote you off. They've gone around saying, he used to have purpose and potential. Mm. He's lost something. He's lost something. He's got a bad name. He's in a bad place. He's got a bad condition. In spite of all that, the king still came looking for him. Talk, man. Somebody right now, the king is looking for you. You might have a bad name. You might be in a bad place. You might even have a bad condition. There is nothing too hard for God. Too hard yeah. for the grace of God. Let me just tell you, grace is so amazing. It will find you like you were, but won't lead you that way. Oh, what a sweet sound. That saved messed up individual like me. Anybody can testify, I know what you're talking about. It's time for you to come out of loaded bar. You've been there long enough. Mephibosheth was hiding out in Loaded Ball, afraid of David because of what other people experienced. He was actually running from his own blessing. <laughs> it was because he perceived that just like they took out all of his other aunts and uncles and cousins, yes. that they were going to take him out. Yes, sir. He didn't just, Amen. he didn't understand that there was something that was different about him. Yes. Stop making other people's experience your, your personal experience. Just because somebody else didn't make it. That ain't got nothing to do with you. You got a date with destiny. It ain't for everybody else. It's your date with destiny. Going around asking Negroes, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? What do you, it don't matter what anybody thinks about it. It only matters what God thinks about it. And when God thinks it, it's going to be what it is. What I like about God is he's sovereign. God don't have to ask nobody permission to do anything. He can do whatever he want to do, however he'd like to do it. And get this, whatever God does, whatever he want to do, it's well done. Well done. Anybody stand all over the room.